Hello, my name is Piotr and today we will talk about Context API versus Redux and when to choose what. Let's start with the agenda. First, we will talk about what is a state of an application, how props passing works, essential tools to provide state of the application throughout components, in this case we will talk about Redux and Contents API, and how to decide which tools should we use. So, the first question. What is the state of application? State of application is a global data accessible throughout the whole application. Whenever the user updates the state, any component that uses it will re-render. How exactly can we get access to an application state? Let's take this as an example component tree. Also, let's say our main component is component A. Now, component D and G want to access a state which component A holds. To do so, component D has to ask component C, which asks component B that asks component A about the state. Same goes from G to F to E to A. Every component that these states go through has to re-render on every state change. How can we prevent that then? I've already prepared two applications to solve this problem. Let's talk about Context API first. In this case, we have one place where we hold our state called Context and components that have access to Context via provider. Let's take a look at a code example. To use Context, we have to import create context from React library. Then, all we have to do is to create a const with create context with an empty object. In our main component, we have our context that wraps components with a provider with a value which is our application state. In this case, it has pros and cons equals zero. We also have two buttons, one that increases pros and one that increases cons. In our components, we have imported our context and by using use context hook from React library, we can extract any state property from context. Here we can see it works fine. But also we can see that components we don't change value also re-render. Why is that? Because context makes every component in the provider to re-render whenever data is changed. Here's where Redux comes in handy. We have an exact same looking application that does the same thing. Pros and cons and two buttons to increase them. But what's different is that whenever we update one of the values, only a specific component is re-rendered. Redux application works in a different way. We have our component that dispatches an action to a reducer, which goes to our store and updates necessary values. Let's take a look at the code and how we can start working with Redux. First of all, we have to create our initial values. In our case, it will be pros and cons equal zero. Then we have to create our actions. One is to increase pros value and one to increase cons value. Action is just a function that returns a type of an action, which is simply a string. After that, we have to create a reducer. Reducer is also a function that takes state, in our case it will be the initial state, and also an action. Based on action type, we return a new updated state. And last, but not least, we have to create our store with create store, which is imported from Redux library that takes reducer as an argument. Already, you can see how complicated it is compared to context, and we haven't really achieved anything yet. So how can we use it? First of all, Let's wrap our app component in index.js in a provider from React Redux library. Then we pass our store to this component store prop. In our base component, let's import two main hooks from React Redux library. Use dispatch and use selector. Use dispatch will let us use an action and use selector will let us specify which state property we want to update. Let's also import our actions. Here we can create a dispatch const which is a reference to the use dispatch hook and also data const that is our state provided by use selector hook. Our buttons use dispatch with a specific action. 
In a single component, we can see that it is wrapped in a React memo. It prevents unnecessary re-render when values don't change. So here, our value is a specific value from the state, and that's how Redux works. So, what's the advantages of each of these tools? Let's take a look at context. First of all, it is a built-in package, which means we can use it without extending the size of our project. As shown, it is much easier to understand than Redux. It is great for static or very rarely changing data, for example, a theme of our page. It requires a lot less boilerplate than Redux. And of course, the documentation is great. What are Redux's advantages? It is commonly used, which means a lot of the problems are already solved by the community. It is great for often refresh data, because we can prevent a lot of unnecessary re-renders. As shown before, it is easily integrated with React thanks to React Redux library. Redux also allows us to use it on server-side rendering applications. And last but not least, most of the Redux applications have similar code structure. When to choose what? So, the question is often asked, what to choose? And the answer is, it depends. In the case of small applications, where data isn't changed often, context seems to be a better choice. But when application is big and complex, and application state changes frequently, Redux seems to be a winner. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon in the next episode of Expert Zone.